Adam. Jody's like Ted Bundy. She's pathological. Ted Bundy's got that smile where he's just, nobody can get their head around what he does when they look at his pictures or listen to some of the things. She is completely pathological. Before we get into today's video, I did wanna let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comments section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody, anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance in hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all are having a wonderful week so far. I hope everybody is feeling good and doing great. So in today's video, we are back with, I'm going to consider our number two video in this whole Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrandt situation. Now, if you guys have not watched the first video that I did on this, go and watch it first. I'm gonna have a playlist started. You watch that one and this is, this is gonna be considered the second video and you guys, I y'all stay to the end of this video because I want y'all to get the full spectrum, the full picture of what I have found to seemingly be going on here. And then I want to know what y'all's opinion is too. And this would be a good place for me to tell you guys that this whole entire video is alleged. I don't know these people. I wasn't in any of these situations, so I cannot say for sure. However, I pull all of my information from very, very, very public sources that is already out there. And then I'm gonna tell you guys the situation and the stories filtered through my own words and my own opinions. So go do your own research and form your own opinions. Before we get into this though with Jody and whoa, the rabbit hole goes deep. I did wanna let you guys know if y'all don't know, hi, my name is Christina. I do have a second channel, which is Casually Christina. It's more casual over there. I also have a Patreon. My Patreon is for 18 and up. Over there we talk about more personal stuff. We go live over there and I also have a $2 tier where all the true crime stuff that cannot go on to YouTube due to their terms and policies, that goes over on my Patreon under the $2 tier. I also have a Facebook, a Snapchat, and an Instagram, and those are all linked down in my description box if you'd like to come and check me out. So, okay, let's talk about Jody Hildebrandt. So, Jody Hildebrandt is 54 years old and has been living in Utah. Most of Jody's private life has remained private. However, some of the things that we do know about her is that she is a divorced mother of two. She has a son and a daughter. And oddly enough, because if you don't know, Jody has run this like online platform slash counseling slash monthly subscription Skype counseling type of thing where she has been giving advice to people on marriage and giving advice on parenting. Jody's ex-husband actually filed for the divorce against her back in 1999 and also filed for custody of their two children and won. Okay, so he filed for a divorce against her. He also filed for custody, allegedly got both of the kids and Jody had to pay child support. Now, does that mean just because you're not married or have a healthy relationship and you also don't have your children that you should not be giving advice on these things? Well, to each his own what your opinion is, but when you see the full spectrum of the things that Jody has done, you might understand by the end of this video why that little tidbit is interesting. Allegedly, according to Google, Jody is worth $4.29 million. Now we don't know how accurate that is, but we do know that the home that she has lived in is a $3 million home. So Jody ain't doing too bad for herself offering her counseling services and her parenting tips and advice and all of that. Jody graduated from Brigham Young University, which is also known as BYU, back in 1996 with a bachelor's degree in English, language, and literature. She then received her master's in educational psychology from the University of Utah in 2003. According to Jody's 
LinkedIn page. She worked as a therapist and educator for Connections Classroom since January of 2007. And Jody describes herself as an author, a life coach, and the founder and creator of Connections Classroom based in Utah. Jody says that her curriculum that she uses is strongly based on the five years of experience that she had working at a facility that treated substance rehabilitation, a center that focused on treating addictions. Now Jody says after she left this treatment facility that she designed and created the Connections 101 course, which is a basis for teachings throughout the various counseling programs that are offered through her Connections classroom. Now the things that Jody was offering at her Connections classroom is very important because it's going to help us understand the type of clientele that she attracted, the type of people that would go to her and what they were struggling with or what they were vulnerable with in their lives and why they were seeking therapy. If you're like me, you've had pain in your life. It could be from a divorce, work conflicts, relationship issues with children, grandchildren, spouse, anxiety, depression, or fear that you don't understand, feelings that you're not enough or that you're unlovable. Connections is the solution. You can change. You can experience feelings of being whole, centered, liberated, connected, empowered, and free. Come and see for yourself. There's something here for you. Her stated mission is to spread these teachings to the world so everyone can have healthy, fulfilling, and connecting relationships. But what isn't mentioned on Jody's website is that back in 2012, she actually got in trouble with state regulators for discussing patients' addictions with leaders from the LDS church and BYU without his permission. This brings me to Adam Paul Steed, who, by the way, is very brave to have come out and spoke about all the things that he has spoke about but we're gonna we're just gonna start with him because we're talking about the website and the connections classroom that Jody has built and has been teaching others people that are very vulnerable well this is exactly what happened when Adam Paul Steed came to her he and his wife were a part of the Mormon church went to his leaders and was recommended to go see Jody for marriage counseling for him and his wife. Adam actually has a history with the church from whenever he was younger, as well as Boy Scouts of America. But we'll get more into that a bit later. But now here he's coming, you know, with him and his wife to Jody for therapy sessions. This is when they begin to talk. Him and his wife begin to talk to her. And he would say that he felt like Jody was was pretty much turning his wife against him, that things weren't getting better, they were actually getting worse. And I'm putting this in my own words at this point, but the way that I'm understanding it is Jody was getting way too close with his wife. So now his wife is becoming more and more connected with Jody. It seems like his wife began to get brainwashed by Jody and then would do things to like entrap Adam or to set him up or to try to get him in trouble and put him in these really weird positions. Adam would even say that Jody didn't even really get to know him. She rarely asked him any questions about himself or his concerns. She was very concerned with his wife, however, though. And she was also concerned with the bills that she was sending Adam because Adam said that he was getting bills upwards to $2,000 a month for these therapy sessions or these marriage counseling sessions for him and his wife to go see Jody, but yet she's not even talking to him. And then things got really bad when Jody started to spread lies about him to the people at the church and to people that he knew. Adam said that his personal life began Began to unravel and that his wife even thought that it would be best if he moved out of the house if he got you know gave her time just her and the kids to work on you know herself and she started working with Jody at this point and then Adam was basically isolated away from his family this is when he said that his personal life totally began to unravel he was having issues at church and with his job and to make a long story short he basically said that Jody 
ruined his life. Adam did fight back though, and he went and obtained legal counsel. And again, to make another long story short, the court subpoenaed all of Jody's like emails. And this is where they found that Jody was indeed discussing personal things or medical records between her and these emails and other people, including his wife, like she was being very inappropriate. They ended up subpoenaing her notes that she wrote because remember she didn't spend any time getting to know him. And the notes that she had was very, very, very small, like almost nothing, but yet she had these long emails to other people saying that he had all these addictions and he had prono addictions and he had all these issues. And basically he ended up winning. And this is how the state got involved and Jody ended up getting her license suspended and she was put on 18 months probation and she had to do like all of this stuff to get her license reinstated. I think it was like 22 different things. This is one situation, but that is definitely not the only one because there has been a ton of former clients of Jody's that has come forward with allegations of a of behavior, control issues, and manipulation even within her own marriage. Some individuals even claimed that Jody had extramarital affairs with both men and women while she was married. And some people even claimed that Jody would be hitting on their wives. There was even speculation that Jody had romantic feelings towards Ruby Frank, okay? Now y'all remember that as we continue to go into this. I get emotional. I, I love children. I love children. I love your children. And I have a very sacred charge to help you protect them. And Ruby, that's what she's doing. Her, her, her husband, her, other people, she's allowed me to be in her life so I can help raise and teach and guide her children. And that's what we want to share with you is how to do that. Now, as we all know, Ruby had a YouTube channel called Eight Passengers that she showed her family of eight living their daily lives with a focus on parenting. However, after receiving criticism of her parenting style, Ruby stopped posting on her YouTube channel and eventually deleted it. But something that has recently resurfaced is a video of Ruby sitting and talking to her oldest son, Chad. Now this, this video is years old because Chad is an adult now living on his own, but it's a video of Ruby talking to Chad and talking about Chad's therapist and guess who's Chad's therapist is. I call yesterday with my therapist and she taught me about truth and distortion. Mom probably talks about Jody all the time, but. I've mentioned Jody a few times. She has a podcast called Connections with an X. Yep, you guessed it, Jody. So when I saw that, I thought, man, how long has Jody been involved like this in this family? Involved with the kids, involved with the discipline, involved with the marriage. Now, after Ruby ended up deleting her YouTube channel, this is when she started making her appearances on the classroom connections with Jody. Now at this point, when Ruby is making these appearances with Jody, she's giving advice about parenting as well as relationships. But what a lot of people did not know was that Ruby at this point had asked her husband, Kevin, to leave the home. Now, according to Kevin's attorney, Kevin was asked by Ruby to leave the home so she could focus on her and the kids. So now Ruby, along with Jody, who both of them have these marriages that are like this, and both of them have these situations with their children, are now giving advice on how to have a healthy relationship and how to raise their children. Now it's not clear how or exactly when they met, but it is rumored that they met through Ruby's brother, Bo, because Bo was a patient of Jody's. A Google review has surfaced that was apparently left by Bo for connections. Now, I don't know Bo or Ruby's brother, so I can't say for sure, but what I can say is that this review was left a year ago, and this is what this review says. It says, I am very concerned that what I've shared gets gossiped about among others. I've scheduled an appointment that was canceled without informing me. Jody ignores my request for the receipts of services. Then on August 30th, Jody and Ruby were arrested on these CA charges, and they're both being held without 
bail. As we've seen, both Jody and Ruby have made first court appearances, and on September 6, the Washington County Attorney's Office in Utah said that Jody and Ruby both are now facing six counts of aggravated CA. Now, since the news has broke that the two of them are in jail and both of them are having medical issues now, both of them are being like put in the medical ward and Jody's been transferred to the hospital. But since then, more people, it seems like, are feeling strong enough to come and speak out. And one of the people that has spoken out has been Jody's niece. Jesse Hildebrandt, who is Jody's niece, has come out and spoke about the traumatic experiences of living with Jody and receiving therapy from her. Yeah, I was I was left in her care when I was a teenager um, for a little under a year. So yeah, it's been a it's been a really interesting experience watching everyone focus on Ruby, and I understand why. But this is Jody. These are Jody's words. These are Jody's ideas. These have are over decades old. So the things that I experienced while living with Jody, I experienced being tied, I experienced being duct taped, I experienced being blindfolded, I experienced uh, severe isolation, I experienced severe emotional, spiritual, and psychological abuse. I experienced um, the being told I, I, I shouldn't be around other people, being told that I was dangerous to be around. Um, I was People were afraid of me to the point where I was afraid of myself. I was I was forced to sleep outside in the snow. I was, um, like I said, isolated for up to 12 hours a day. Um, if I if someone wanted if someone spoke to me directly, if I wasn't wearing duct tape on my mouth, um, I had to just stare at them and not respond because she also had systems of people that would re report back to her if I broke any of these rules. She accused me of being a sex. She accused me of being uh, addicted to masturbation to the point where I wasn't allowed to, I, I mentioned this on the podcast, to the point where I wasn't allowed to use tampons. Um, I never was allowed privacy unless I was isolated. So that included the bathroom. I was never allowed to have the door closed because she was convinced that I was just constantly masturbating. She was convinced that I was addicted to porn. Um, I had never seen porn at that point in my life. I. I'd never, I didn't even know that people with <laughs> my anatomy could masturbate. Like I, I had no idea any of this stuff, but I just believed her because she, everything like one, she used religion and God as a mode of control um, and a, a mode to manipulate. And so I just believed all of these things. So her ability to convince you of these uh, neuroticisms and um, these behaviors is, and I was a teenager. And so a child in that position of being told this over and over and over and over again, which I'm certain he was, um, stood no chance. Now there's been a police report that has been released by a news source about a time that Jesse was actually living with Jody. Now, Jody and Jesse's father are brother and sister, so that's how they know each other, and that's how they have the same last name as well. Seems like Jesse's parents were maybe desperate when Jesse was younger and going through the teenage thing, you know, maybe maybe a little back talk, maybe what they considered to be rebellious, which again, rebellion is sometimes subjective. Some one per, one parent might think that a little talking back is rebellion or oh my gosh, they're going down the wrong path. And another parent may think, oh, well, they just have an attitude. They're being moody. So it is subjective. But nevertheless, it seems like Jesse's parents thought that they were doing maybe the right thing by sending Jesse to go live with Jody, thinking that Jody could help. However, the police report that's come out has showed that back in 2010, Jesse was asking for a safe house. When the investigators questioned and said, okay, why are you looking for a safe house? This is when Jesse told the police that. Living with her aunt Jody was basically abusive situations. Now, mind you, this happened back in 2010. This is when also Jesse tells the police, and it is in this report, that Jody would duct tape the mouth. And that's also very interesting that now we're in 2023 and two children were found in her basement duct taped. Okay, let's keep going here. To make a long story short with that situation, she was not taken to a safe house. The cops ended up calling Jesse's father who confirmed that yes, Jesse was supposed to be with Jody. Jesse went back with Jody and then eventually Jesse ran away from Jody's. 
Another person that has come forward has been a man named Trey Warner. Now, this is another man who went to Jody along with his wife for marriage counseling. Trey told a news media outlet that a friend had actually recommended Jody to him as a marriage therapist and that they were looking for somebody and so they ended up going to meet Jody. And this is when he said it did not take very long for him to realize that things were turning evil. To feel more and more evil. And I finally, in one of the group meetings, I got up and I just said, this is off. There was a man that had a successful business that believed that he was a danger to his wife and his family because he did a double take. As a woman, like if he saw a beautiful woman, he, he would see and he'd look again. This guy got his own apartment and separated from his family because he was a danger. Now, Trey also claimed that Jody would use shaming tactics in order to pit the husbands against the wives. Again, remember the first person that we talked about, Adam Steed? Okay. Trey would even say that some of the guys in the group were so upset from being like isolated from their families, they were beating themselves up. I mean, you guys can just only imagine, like they're completely engulfed in the church, all of their friends have the same, you know, beliefs or morals or religious views as they do. They're going to this therapist, they're in, in these group settings, and now they believe that their thoughts are evil and that they're evil. Their wife thinks there's something wrong with them. The kids, you know, they got, got to keep them safe because now the family's in danger. So now the husbands have to move out. They have to get their own place. And now the husbands are alone and isolated and beating themselves up. And to the point that Trey said that that some of them even considered like, why do I go on? What is the point of living? And that is so sad to think about. Now we're gonna go over some of the reviews or some of the things that just like anonymous people have said about Jody and her therapy sessions. Now, I specifically found reviews or comments or different stuff that were older than, than what has happened recently. So I know that it's not just people that are coming out saying stuff now, but things that people have been saying for a while. And the first one that I'm going to read came out eight months ago. And it says, my wife and I participated in her group therapy in 2018 or thereabouts. As I recall, she had said in class that she had been divorced five times. She never spoke of having a current husband. I'm fairly certain she was not married at the time. I don't know much else about her family life, but I can say that I wish I had never met her. My wife at the time was referred to her by a friend who was hyper-religious and not well at all. When Jody began counseling my wife, that was the beginning of the end for us. My wife became very controlling and took on a victim complex like you would not believe. I was kicked out of my house at the threat of divorce and I was never so isolated in all my life. I learned that most of the other guys were in the same situation. Ironic as the name of the brand is Connections. It was nothing about connecting. Well, when you look at that word and the way Connections was spelt with E X connections, it does kind of make some sense. She had very good materials, not hers, but licensed from another group, Lifestar, I think. It only took two couples meetings with her for me to start suspecting that she hated men. There were rumors that she was a lesbian, although I can't substantiate that claim. I would not be surprised though. Four and a half years after meeting her and two and a half years after my divorce, my ex-wife is a shell of the person she was. Ruled by fear, she continues to cling to control and victim mentality as her safe space, unable to admit fault for anything. It was a tragic ending. We have five kids and we were married for 15 years. Our current co-parenting situation is pretty bad. My ex-wife basically hates me. Thanks for everything, Jody. Run from Jody Hildebrandt. She is dangerous. That is so sad. 15 years of marriage and like that their world was turned upside down. Now there is a bunch of reviews on the connection site and I will leave a link to that down below if you guys wanna go and read them along with the link for the interview with Adam Steed that was done on Mormon Stories podcast as well as the interview that they did with Jesse Hildebrandt. That's all gonna be down in the description box along with these other assets that I'm telling you guys about if y'all wanna go and check those out as well. But I'm gonna briefly read over 
some of this. So Dan wrote three months ago, I have grave concerns about the organization called Connections Classroom and Moms of Truth. My husband and I took the first course for couples and benefited from being reminded to not tell ourselves unhelpful or untrue stories and to invite one another to listen when we feel we have another perspective to share. We are grateful for the correct principles we were reminded of through the course material. However, there were some serious red flags we witnessed while taking the course and through subsequent exposure to connections. Though I recognize there is a need for helpful counseling to help heal relationships, destructive division is actually what connections is perpetuating. The biggest problem I see is that Jody and Ruby do not use the principles they purport to teach. Instead of golden rule type language and patient understanding interactions, they often harshly and forcefully shame and batter people down in a brash and cruel manner when they ask questions or have concerns, though they are very kind to those who agree with them. Four months ago, Calvin said, I wouldn't trust this company. They use brainwashing tactics to manipulate you. They intentionally make you feel bad about yourself and use slander. Please stay away from this company at all costs. They are a scam. Nine months ago, an anonymous person wrote, they will ruin your family through mind control. They don't want you to think for yourself and critically think. They want to shelter you. They are an actual cult, an actual cult. They also assaulted me. I am suing. Now there's a lot of stuff out there like this. I'm going to read a couple comments that was left on Jody Hildebrandt's like Facebook account. I do want to say that her children are innocent in this as well. I mean, they have nothing to do with this. So please, if you see them online, don't be ugly to them. Don't be ugly to anybody. But I do feel bad because I can only imagine what Jody's kids are thinking right now. But I saw this right here where Jody shared this video and somebody commented a year ago, you are a piece of beep. More comments said, no, she's right. She's more than that. She's an effing psycho. Another person wrote, you are a psycho piece of beep. Now this is a comment I found interesting. Check this out. Ruby, what happened to the glow and happiness that used to show on your face? Maybe cutting your parents, siblings, nieces and nephews out of your life was the truth to what makes you happy? Somebody else wrote, Jody, you really thought you were getting away with this. We all know your tactics. It is so obvious. You got your psychology license revoked and now you can't practice. So you go and manipulate manipulate and scam people. And now you're using Ruby for your cult because she is an influencer. Just wow. This is ridiculous. When Ruby finds out you are going down, I will make sure that she gets away from your brainwashing. You literally cannot brainwash everyone. We aren't that dumb. I hope your cult ends. Another comment said, cult leader abomination. And this one gets me y'all. This was left a year ago and this seems to be by the same person that left that other comment speaking to Ruby on Jody's page. And this comment says, I truly hope Ruby comes to her senses, especially for her kids' sake. Well, she obviously did not come to her senses and not in time because they are both in jail and they are both facing big prison sentences. Now, to bring all of this together, and there really actually is more that's already come out, more comments, more reviews, and all of that, there is a theory that is going around. The theory is that Jody actually ha like has do does hate men and has these relationships with women and she excuses it away in her beliefs for for whatever reason, like it's a different type of connection or whatever, but yet she continues to allegedly isolate these women from their husbands cuz remember Kevin just recently, which is Ruby's husband, moved out of the house away from his kids as well, which is pretty a uh, pretty big kawinky dink when you see all these other reviews and hear all these other people's stories. It is also a theory that because of Jody's reputation and because she has been suspended and she's allegedly done all this other stuff that she latched on to Ruby because Ruby had a social media presence and this could have been her way to like be a star and make a lot more money was to connect 
with Ruby. Now I'm not making no excuses for Ruby at all because I'm just not, okay? She made her own decisions. Was she brainwashed, all of this? I don't know, we're gonna see. And they may start telling on each other. Who, who knows what's gonna happen? But I know for me personally, there ain't nobody in this world that could brainwash me into duct taping my children and sticking them in a basement. And by the way, I don't know if you guys know this, but when they found the kids at Jody's house in the basement, when the 12 year old, the son went to the neighbor's house and y'all listened to that 911 phone call in the last video, they were in one part of Utah. When they found Jody and Ruby, they were actually at Ruby's house four hours away on the opposite end of Utah. So those kids were in that house, in that basement, and they did not even know that Ruby and Jody weren't there. So if they were four hours away and those kids did not even know that there was no parent or adult there with them, how often did they get left like that for them not even to recognize? I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I can't even go to the bathroom without mom needing something. I can't, I can't. I couldn't disappear for four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours at a time. And it's also rumored that the kids, even when they weren't down there in the basement, that they were left at home alone for long periods of times. Some neighbors said for weekends, they would just be out wandering around in the front yard in the neighborhood with no supervision there. But yet these two were online giving vulnerable, desperate families advice. Ruby's sister-in-law spoke out as well, and they said that they'd never really liked Ruby from day one, and that Ruby always thought she was better than anyone else that she was around. They even said if you look up narcissist in the dictionary, there would be a picture of Ruby. Julie, when you turned eight years old, do you remember I gave you the gold ring when I was a little girl? Mm -hmm and you grew out of it because it doesn't fit you anymore. But I just enjoyed seeing it on your hand so much. Every day when I would see it on your hand, I would remember that you really are precious and that you really are a jewel and it would remind me to treat you with a lot of respect and love. And so really that ring is for me. So when I see you wear it, it reminds me of yourself. <laughs> to treat to treat you with love and to remember just how precious. Now bringing it back to Adam Paul Steed that we talked about in the beginning of this video, according to him, he actually, when he was younger, spoke out against like essay that had happened within the church as well as the Boy Scouts, Boy Scouts of USA. Do y'all remember when that big, huge scandal had come out about the, the Boy Scouts um, situation? Well, he is the one that spoke out about it and pressed the issue. It seems like Adam does wonder if there is a connection with him getting linked up with Jody to what happened with him being a whistleblower about the essay that was going on hush hush within the church when he was younger. I also wanted to bring up the whole Kevin situation. Kevin is again, Ruby's husband, the father of their six children. Was he another victim? Like all these other stories that we've heard about where the woman is manipulated and the husband is isolated. A lot of people have said like he knew what was going on and that, 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 that was, was he a victim too? I don't know. Maybe he wasn't. Maybe he's just as bad as her, but it is a thought when you hear about the full picture. What do you guys think? Y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section down below. Other than that, thank y'all for watching this video. I love y'all and I will see y'all in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.